Uh, today I'm going to show you how to build a, uh, a meat smoker, something that will last more than a year, like an old file cabinet meat smoker or something like that. Or these little little guys you put, you know, little round jobs that look like UFOs sitting in the backyard. We built us a meat smoker here out of a 40 gallon hot water heater that uh, we found was being thrown out. And we used some uh, parts in, uh, from different uh, pieces of junk out of the trash piles, old bed, uh, bed frames and stuff like that. And we're going to show you how we did it. Okay, uh, we were getting ready for the uh, fall season of uh, butchering hogs. This is a little smoker we made. Uh, this will be its second year that we've used it. Uh, we built out a bunch of junk we found laying around the yard and here and there and whatnot. So we're going to show you uh, how we did that. Maybe it'll work, maybe it'll work for you. So uh, we started with a, a 40 gallon hot water heater tank that was being thrown out that uh, we hauled home that was junk. Had a nice solid uh, uh, liner inside of it. These newer ones are all cased in styrofoam. It's a, it's a booger to get off of there, but once you get them cleaned off real good, they work just fine. And um, we started by cutting us a door to the side of the barrel, and we used a uh, four-inch angle grinder. You know, another one of those uh, expensive Harbor Freight tools. And uh, we cut this hole out. And, uh, and then we just took some strap steel and made a little lip to go over so it overlaps a little bit. Now, the strap steel, we made the handle and all this around here with, and um, the framing for our, some of our interior parts and the framing that is inside all came from an old set of uh, box springs that we found in a junk pile. And we just uh, recycled the metal out of them, the parts we needed, and used that. And here's part of the bed rails in here. And those are uh, just spot welded, all about every foot or so, and uh, just to give you a nice frame to set your grates on. And uh, this particular smoker is what we call a reverse flow smoker. Uh, this is where the, the heat and smoke comes up out of the firebox through this duct we, we put in here. It goes through, it's a six inch pipe, it turns and goes into our, our fire chamber. And uh, we'll show you what the fire chamber looks like after we build the inside. We've got all this stuff sitting here in front of it. So, in order to have a reverse flow smoker, you have to have a layer. You have to have a layer of solid material underneath the meat so that the smoke and the heat comes up and goes under that layer. And at the other end, it's allowed to, to roll over and come back across the meat before it goes out here, out the chimney. And so that, that heats the metal underneath the meat to kind of have a baking kind of effect. And it floats all the smoke right across the top of the meat. And then we keep track of the temperature up there in that smoke stream with the thermometer that just is a, you know, you buy that anywhere and stick it in. All there. right, so we've got our frame inside. This is what our grate's going to go on. And we need a piece that we can put under that that'll hold up the baffle, the solid baffle between the meat area and the initial heat smoke area in here. And so we used regular uh, half inch rebar and uh, just welded it at the corners, made a grid, measured it up so that we could get it in here and set it in above our heat duct that changes the flow from, from this way back underneath that. We're going to put this in. You can see how that sits in there. But we'll give it a shot. All right, then we got uh, here's our first piece of baffle, and you can see it's been rounded a little bit on the edges. It's slightly different size because we want to keep a, a downward slope on this baffle, just a little bit of downward slope to the other end because you're going to have a lot of grease and stuff dripping, especially if you're doing pork meat, and it'll run down to the other end and go out the drain. fits in there just like that. And then we have our, our short piece that we use uh, for an adjustment that we put in below it. 
and then we slide it under it. And in doing this, we can control from here. You need at least this much room for the smoke to come around the corner and start coming back this way. Uh, we just can slide it up like this if we're only doing meat up here and just let more of the heat come on up and provide for you know temperature control and whatnot. Now we have the grates. These are uh, angle iron from the uh, same set of uh, bed springs and some um, uh, expanded metal that we just had uh, laying around. We made grates. They're curved on one end because the bed springs were curved on one end. We slide those in. that and this is uh, this is heavy stuff heavy steel pipe for exhaust heavy tank uh, the door is, is made from the tank itself these are just common metal tabs from uh, any home improvement center that I uh, tack welded onto this Okay, for the firebox, we used an old, uh, I don't know, 20 a gallon metal tank. It's an old grease tank that we cleaned out and burned the inside of it out and whatnot. It's a little bit light gauge. If you had your choice here, you would use a, uh, a five gallon hot water heater tank, maybe a 10 for your firebox instead of using one of these. But it's what we had laying around, so it worked all right. We did the same, uh, same idea here. We cut our access door for building the fire in it from this end. And uh, we just use a piece of wire to hang it up here while we're putting stuff in there. And then in the door of this, the end of the barrel, I'll take this off so you can see. We just took a flat piece of steel, drilled a bunch of holes in a pattern through it, welded a little handle on it, and then we just drilled holding it steady right through the top of the can and uh, we use that as air control right there and it can have some more holes in it less holes in it, it just depends on what works for you and uh, as you can see inside there's a metal grate laying across there we build a fire on top of so we can shovel the ashes out from under it and pop them out this way and yeah so in order to control our temperature we have our air inlet here we have our exhaust damper here and we can control how hot the fire gets by how much air we let in and out and you want to balance that for whatever temperature you're shooting for whenever you're uh, smoking your meat. One thing you might want to keep in mind when you start to cut your barrel when you first get started is turn it so that all of the plugs all the where the water drain plug was where the heating elements were this this line here that has the uh, the plugs in it, you're going to want to turn that down and leave this plug open. And this is going to be your drain where stuff drains out. And you can, you know, set you up an apparatus here to catch that because if you're smoking hogs, there'll be a lot of uh, a lot of fat comes out of this hole. Okay. Now the stand you see that this thing is standing up on there. These are wheels off an old barbecue grill. We kind of took the axle off of it and added some rebar in the middle of it to make a longer axle. All this tubing is from an old backyard swimming pool frame, which everybody's had to throw away and get rid of. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we, uh, these things are pretty thin and uh, I gas welded it. You, know, you can weld them however it works for you. You can probably just, you know, smash them together and put a bolt through it. Build yourself a frame for it all to sit on. Here again, we got metal straps from the old bed springs. Uh, these are thin galvanized metal. The lips I put on this because it's such a thin barrel. But uh, this could be the same as we have on the main door. If you had a five gallon or a 10 gallon hot water heater tank. And uh, we use ours when the, the weather's kind of cold out a lot of times. So to help uh, conserve our heat underneath there and keep the whole thing warmed up, we put a piece of corrugated metal just screwed onto the uh, to the pipes on the back side to help hold in heat. 
and then we took a, a small piece of a sheet metal and wrapped it around where the, the elbow pipe comes from the firebox up into the bottom of the smoker. So there you have it. Uh, we're all put back together. We've got to kind of clean everything off, you know, every year when you finish using it before you start using it again. Got it all brushed off, cleaned off, rinsed off, ready to go, all put back together. Now it's time to build us a little fire in there. <laughs>